Hi, my name is Thorsten Fiebig and I'm a director within Software AG's API Management R&D organization. Today I'm talking about how to leverage API management to avoid running into a microservice Death Star problem. As we know, microservice architecture provide the flexibility to evolve business applications faster. The flexibility results from various aspects, including using different technology stacks, releasing new tech functionality independently. The decoupling of the microservices does not come for free. Apparently, the possible and required interactions between the microservices results in a higher complexity of the architecture. To gain control over the service interaction, certain capability, capabilities are required, which includes uh, securing connectivity or secure connectivity, service discovery, authentication authorization of microservice clients, logging and tracing for observability. Moreover, failure detection and recovery, a recovery is required. Implementing all these capabilities into each microservice again and again requires a lot of effort and is error prone. A service mesh framework can help here to make the life easier of the developers. It provides all the capabilities. Usually this is done via service mesh proxies or sidecars that are deployed along with the microservices. The big plus is that microservice developers can concentrate on implementing business logic. All the infrastructure related capabilities do not need to be addressed. Although service mesh frameworks reduces the complexity of microservice development, it does not remove the possible complexity of a microservice architecture. We need to use it carefully to not build a Death Star which is meant as a metaphor for something powerful, but complex, which can be blown up completely by an unexpected minor failure or an unexpected incident. One more building block for reducing complexity is to structure your microservice landscape into domains by applying domain-driven design. Domains can be defined according to business domains but generally speaking, they can be defined over services sharing the same context and being closely related. As the slide shows, the domain itself can have, or the domains itself can have different maturity levels in terms of microservice adoption, ranging from monoliths over hybrid domains to domains following completely the microservice principles. Introducing domains implies introducing a kind of layering not all internal or private services within the domain are allowed to be invoked from the outside, or internal services from other domains are not allowed to be invoked. This layering result from defining domains, or this layering resulting from defining domains reduces the number of possible interactions significantly. This means the domain approach helps to structure and better control according to the divide and conquer principle. To make things right, each domain <coughs> exposes its public services over a gateway or even better an API gateway that sits on the edge of a domain. Also the outbound calls of the services to other domains are controlled via API gateways acting as proxies. The gateway ensures that the interaction between domains is properly controlled via defining APIs and exposing them via API gateways. Nevertheless, we need to remember that as the environment grows, new domains are defined and new interactions or dependencies between domains are introduced. The complexity grows faster and faster. until we reach a state where it will be difficult to keep an overview over all microservices and their dependency. It will take an army of developers to run and maintain such a microservice architecture, and there are only very limited number of people who really understand the full picture. So even by structuring your microservice architecture into domains, 
you still have a growing complexity that needs to be controlled. So how can you do that? Well, the first thing is that we need a higher level governing component which can provide overview and control of the entire landscape. Especially we need visibility and control over the dependencies between domains and microservices. We need to know who's consuming which microservice and we need to be able to control the consumption relationship. Applying API management is one way of gaining the control and visibility. And as we just have seen, the first step is to establish API gateway at the edge of domains and to expose public APIs and to control the outbound invocations. API gateways alone are not sufficient since we also need a component inside the domains to control the communication between microservices and that collaborates with the API gateways and other API management components. This calls out for a runtime component that is designed and built specifically for that purpose. So this component is different from an API gateway or from the API gateways that are sitting uh, on the edge of the components since the edge gateways can't cope with the traffic between the microservices itself. Here a more lightweight component is required which can be deployed along with the microservices but still covers the capability of an API gateway. Such a micro gateway still needs to collaborate closely with other API management components to achieve the overall governance. So why can't service mesh proxies or sidecuts do this job? As I explained before, service mesh is the technology to control the communication between microservices resulting from breaking down monolith applications. Service mesh proxies, proxy capabilities are focused on communication related or network related aspects, including discovery of service, observability of service interactions, fault tolerance, connectivity, and um, other network enforcements. Although service mesh gives all these capabilities, it does not consider any application semantics. So for example, it does not allow to identify consumer, and therefore does not enable um, the consumer-based authorization that is required for accessing sensitive data. Similar to that, it does not offer any masking capability um, for hiding sensitive data against unauthorized access. Moreover, it does not provide any routing capabilities based on data. And uh, since it's not consumer aware, it does not offer any business analytic capabilities. Especially putting the consumer authentication and authorization <coughs> close to the microservice um, is important to not leave any security gaps in the microservice landscape. Implementing such capabilities into microservices is again tedious and error prone. Therefore, we need an infrastructure or platform for this. So that's why at Software AG we work on AppMesh. And uh, AppMesh is closing this gap uh, by making APIs and their consumer first class citizens. This allows to inject API where policy enforcements into your service mesh without leaving any gaps when it comes to service to service communication. So AppMesh allows you to look at your service mesh and see application and APIs within the mesh. Moreover, it allows you to configure policies um, on application and API level and um, inject them into your microservices without affecting the availability. So that eventually you can just build a logical architecture 
uh, with domains of various kinds, right? But defining APIs and applying API gateways and micro gateways, um, you can control the exposure of APIs at the edge of domains and even at the edge of the whole microservice architecture. So imposing API governance ensures that um, all the APIs stay operational um, and that their dependencies are not broken. With API governance, you can control the whole life cycle of your APIs, which also includes the publishing of public APIs to API portal. As a vital part of an API management landscape, the API portal enables um, internal and external developer to discover and consume um, APIs within your service mesh. The definition of APIs and the exposure via API gateway and API portal are on um, <clears throat> enable, for example, an API-led integration, which allows you to expose new APIs fast. Applying app mesh and micro gateway ensure that not just the inter-domain traffic is controlled, but also the inter-service communication, which makes the API management-based approach comprehensive. So to recap, microservices gives us a lot of flexibility and agility to allow to innovate faster, um, but the flexibility does not come for free since a microservice architecture comes with a higher complexity. Service Mesh helps since it provides important aspects for controlling a microservice architecture, especially communication within such a landscape. Um, so although very helpful, <coughs> it does not block you from building complex architectures that can't be controlled and that can explode easily like a death star. Applying API management and API governance principles are a promising approach to avoid the complexity pitfalls. API management and governance can be nicely combined with other approaches like the domain-driven design. An important role plays the AppMesh concept that bridges the gap between microservices and API management by adding application and API context, even to the interaction between services and establishing control and visibility without any gaps, which means applying API management is key for controlling a microservice landscape. So, and SoftAG has the platform which can deliver all the required API management capabilities. And we have just recently been recognized as a leader in the recent Forrester API, API management solution wave. Moreover, you can give us a try. Um, so please have a look at our cloud offering or, or free trial product images on Docker Hub. We also have a GitHub presence where you can find a big collection of tutorials and code samples covering a lot of use cases. And you can also have a look at our online demos available on our YouTube channels. So there are many options to learn more about our API management offering. So please give us a try. And that's actually it, what I was, what I have planned to talk about. And thank you for your attention and hope to talk to you again soon. Bye.